Histamines talking. Histamines. Is it histamines or a misdemeanor? That's what I do. <laughs> you really like that. I did like that. What's going on guys? Today we're coming at you with an actual revolutionary video, at least in my life. It's not going to be for everyone, but... It's not for me. Yeah, seasonal allergies, sinus infections. For 26 years of my life, I didn't experience this at all. And I was, anyone who had them, like my sister, she took Claritins all the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's just making things up. Like what's going on over there? I wouldn't say sinus infection. I would just say like inflamed sinuses. Maybe? I think at its peak, it was a full blown sinus infection for like a week or so for me. Okay, maybe. I've had sinus infections. They're really, really bad. It was like sinus, upper respiratory, like shortness of breath, couldn't breathe through my nose. So let me just take you back how this all started. Okay. When we moved to Philadelphia, so this was about two years ago, I was having a lot of trouble breathing out of my nose at night mainly. So it was like really disrupting my life to the point where I had a deviated septum surgery. I had broken my nose in college, so it made sense why I would have a deviated septum, trouble breathing. I got the surgery and it helped a decent amount. It made his nose look a lot better. It made my nose look better. It's show like clips side by side of you right now. Okay. You look so different. So there's that benefit for sure. Now thinking back to it, I would have loved to have given this whole, what I'm about to tell you, a try before getting the surgery. The nose job was great. Yeah. For the past like two years or so, I had on and off troubles mm -hmm. with breathing through my nose, just seasonal allergies type of things. Especially at night when he like laid down, he like got <sighs> congested, he would like wake up all flared. Yeah. It got so incredibly bad for the past two months or so. At no point during the day for a month straight could I breathe through my nose. It was just all breathing through my mouth. I was trying everything to like drain my sinuses. I was looking up all these tricks on the internet like- Neti potting all Neti pot, press your tongue on your the roof of your mouth, that type of stuff. Nothing really worked. And then I stumbled on this video by Chris Masterjohn, PhD. I'm gonna link his channel below and his video below. And this is what got me to start thinking about this as far as histamines in foods go. But that being said, let's let's preface that before you started implementing a histamine protocol, you were eating like tons of cheese. You yes. were eating the most histamine means he's ever eaten in his life. That's what it is. And I didn't realize it. Like I never really thought much about histamines, but two months in a row, one month to two months in a row, I was eating the same lunch. I'm just like a creature of habit. And I wanted a convenient lunch. It was crazy. Four ounces of raw milk aged cheese. So this is, I got this kind of from Dr. Berg. He, he does four ounces of cheese a day. I'm like, hey, let me try it. It'll be great and also a can of sardines here. So this is basically, and if you guys don't know what four ounces of cheese looks like, it's more than that. No, I would say that's about four ounces. This right here? Yeah. You think this is four ounces? You don't think so? Let's check. Right under four ounces. Boom, 3.8. Okay. 3.8 ounces, so that's a lot right there. You see that? Yeah. Big, large amount of cheese. Big time. So I was having that and a can of sardines. Which is also really high in histamines. After a month of it is when I had what I would consider to be a sinus infection, upper respiratory infection, just like really struggling. Like I couldn't yeah. lay on my side and watch TV because I couldn't breathe. I had to just sit up straight. His eyes were also extremely baggy yeah. and like he looked like, his face was like swollen looking and he always looked like he was tired. He had just woken up. But yeah, so that is basically the culmination. And then I just did some research, found the video by Chris Masterjohn. And the way he described it, which seems accurate in my experience, there's a bucket and certain things you do are gonna add to that bucket until it overflows and you get the, the seasonal allergies, the sinus infections, things like that. So there is a certain percentage of people that their bucket can just be filled up by like, you know, environmental allergies. This doesn't matter. They're just always gonna have that type of stuff going on. It's mm -hmm. no not diet related at all. They just can't deal with the, the environment. Pollen in the air, yeah. whatever. So that, those people exist for sure. I'm not one of those people because I've never had this in my life before. Dietary intolerances add to that. So like if you have a dairy allergy, casein allergy, something like that, that can add to the bucket. And then histamines is what for me, 100% pushed me over the edge. I would say my bucket was like barely even filled up with anything. It was just all histamines. So you've probably heard of antihistamines like Benadryl. Benadryl. Yeah. And that is one other thing that tipped me off. When I took a Benadryl one night and I just slept like a baby, I could fabulous. breathe again. I felt amazing. So I'm like, okay, it's, I think it's histamine related. So honestly, I don't know like a whole ton about the science behind histamines, how everything exactly works in your body. All that I know is if you're having these issues, a low histamine diet might be something worth trying for you. There's two types of histamines in foods. There's food that contains high amount of histamines just in the actual foods. And then there's foods that stimulate a release of histamines in your body. 
they don't really contain all that much histamines themselves. For me, it was definitely the first thing that was the problem. I was having so much histamines in foods and there's varying degrees of histamines in different foods. So we have a blog post actually, it's linked below. You guys can check that out. Most foods have like a pretty low amount of histamines. The only real trouble food, for me at least, is really aged cheeses. That can have just astronomical amounts of histamines. Mm -hmm. Um, for the exact amounts, you can check out the blog post, but I was eating 18 month age cheese routinely every single day. So unfortunately, champagne is high histamine, which yes. I didn't know. Aged food. There's champagne, there's red wine, coffee, ketchup, eggplant, the list really just goes on. It's anything that's like aged, um, like even sauerkraut or mm -hmm. kimchi, right? It's probiotic fer foods, fermented. fermented foods. That's another thing I was doing, kimchi every day for dinner. So yogurt's also gonna be one, one of those things, it's fermented. And then unfortunately, like pre-cooked sausages, and I love those, so like, we. Yeah. We ate those a ton. Bacon, anything yeah. that's cooked and then you consume at a later date. So yeah. like smoked meats. Meal like, prepping foods. Exactly, even meal prepping foods, they develop histamines over time. Bacteria grows on the foods. Yeah, it's not like in high amounts. Like honestly, the only, I think the problem for me is mainly just the cheese. Because if you look at the chart, cheese can have up to 2,500 milligrams per kilogram of histamines, which is just astronomical compared to everything else. It's gonna be varying for person to person depending on the food. So I have never really had any issues with raw aged cheeses, but for me, I've noticed I've had allergic responses to probiotics, remember? Mm -hmm. I used to get rashes, and so I'd have to take a Benadryl, the antihistamine, and also cooked meat that's been in the fridge for a while, I or like bone broth, I get um, like fatigued, I get tired. So I think even the the response you have could be different. For some people it's sinuses, for some people it's like a rash, for some people it's like you get fatigued and tired. Like for me, I can't eat cooked meat that's been in the fridge for like more than four days because then I just get really like tired. It's, it's such a weird reaction. Couple cool things about histamines, I guess not that cool. Once they form in the food, there's nothing you can do to get rid of them like mm -hmm. cooking. They're just like always there, they're invincible. Only 1% of the population has a histamine allergy, but nearly everyone has a threshold at which they start experiencing problems. And there's also foods that trigger the release of histamines, which are citrus fruits, most fish, spices, peanuts. These are just all more minor things though, like egg whites, chocolate, nuts. That being said, Matt has not cut out all of this stuff. No. He doesn't eat raw cheese. I've just cut out the really aged, high stuff, yeah. yeah. Like aged cheese and the sardines. I think that's all he's really cut out, right? Mm -hmm. The reason I think this, I wanted to share with you guys is because when you start keto, more of these foods seem to come into your diet, like cheese, sardines, those are common snacks. Right. Uh, I think cheese that you get at the grocery store, just like the shredded stuff, that's not gonna be as high as like some good quality aged cheeses. Yeah. Typically, people doing keto definitely are having more histamine rich foods in their diet. What has helped me, that's basically it was just a low histamine diet and it's night and day. I've tried so many, like over the past three years of having this channel, I've tried so many different you know, tweaks on my diet. Mm -hmm. Nothing's even come close to as big of a difference as this has made for me, but it's obviously very person specific too. Yeah, so definitely just give it a try if you find that like you're consuming a lot of these particular foods and you're not having like the best, you know, reactions to them. Really just take in take note of like how you feel after you eat a certain food. I think it took me so long to figure it out to, though. That's the thing. I pay yeah. pretty close attention and it took me forever to figure out why I was having trouble breathing out of my nose. That's pretty much it, guys. That's our chat on histamine. So definitely do some further research. There's a lot more you can learn about histamines. We just don't have that knowledge to share right now. I think this is gonna help at least one person out there struggling with this. And then if that's the case, then this was all worth it. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Comment below if you have any experience with anything like this, like you have sinus issues, you notice the link between histamines and your sinus issues. Sinuses. Sinus issues. Let us know what's up. Bye.